Did you know that your thinking and your art are intimately connected? Okay, I'll say that again. Did you know that your thinking and your art are intimately connected? The Western mindset compartmentalizes you human beings when it comes to feelings and thinking. That's how we brought up. That it's in little boxes, it's, it's not together. The mindset says, the heart feels <coughs> and the mind thinks. That's what the world says. The world says that the heart, the mindset is the heart feels and the mind thinks. But this is what, this is what scripture says in Proverbs 23 verse 7. The King James Version says this. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Completely different different to what the world says. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. In fact, the Hebrew definition of the word heart encom encompasses the entirety of your inner man. Your heart is the seat of your mind, of your imagination, of your will, your desires, your emotions, your affections, your memory, It is also the centre of your communion with the Spirit of God and possesses the faculties that perceive spiritual reality. That's what your heart does. Scripture refers to this spiritual perception as the eyes of your heart. That's what it says, the eyes of your heart. Everything about us comes from within there. Everything about us, the person you're sitting next next to, everything about them comes from within you. It is your heart that enables you to have faith, which is the evidence of things not seen in Hebrews 11 verse 1. So your faith grows as your heart, led by the Holy Spirit, perceives and understands the invisible realm of spiritual reality. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So your faith grows as your heart perceives from the Holy Spirit and understands the things that we cannot see but we believe are true. Yeah. And that's what I love. He, Hebrews 11 for it's called the chapter of faith, because all the people they mentioned in this chapter knew nothing about the cross. It was before what Jesus accomplished on the cross. And if these men and women could accomplish all these things before Christ, how much more for us? Let's have a look at this. I just love this scripture. The Hebrews 11. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith he was commended as a righteous man. When God spoke while of his offerings, and by faith he still speaks even though he is dead. By faith Enoch was taken from his life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about fear not yet seen, he only feared, built, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he, he, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, and, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah's son was barren, 
was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants, um, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sun on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had received the promises were about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead, and figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions about his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born. You'll laugh at this one. On Friday nights, we do him Moses. And so they've got a competition. And so one of the paintings they've got to fill in is, is, is Moses in a basket. And you have to put a head in on the top of it. And we had one back on, on Friday. And that gets what it said. Floating Jesus. <laughs> Great, aren't they, kids? Amazing, aren't they? By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born. Because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's end. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. He regarded his Christ for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith he left Egypt, not feeling the king's anger, he persevered because he saw him who was invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and his sprinkling of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not suffer the firstborn. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I did not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shook the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and rooted foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again, others were tortured and refused to be released, so that they might gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging, whilst their lovers were chained and put in prison. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, they were put to death by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted and mistreated. The world was not worthy of the world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in caves and holes in the ground. Who was that? God had planned something better for us, so that those who those were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. God has planned something better for us. Those were great men and women of God, wasn't they? But God had something better planned for us. Not what it was, but he shed the blood on the cross. That we can now become sons and daughters of the living God. Wow. That unseen realm governs the visible realm and brings your mind and will into agreement with the reality of the kingdom. In essence, it is the process of renewing the mind.